And that right there is the last bit of land we're going to see in a while. We're heading 13 miles up today on, uh, on my sieve. Now that might sound bonkers to some of you, because it's a long way 13 miles, no matter what size of boat you've got really. That's a, that's a long, long day out, but it's going to be worth it. I think we've got some fantastic fishing in store for us. With it being mid-October, you can just about catch anything at this time of year. I'll just do a quick spin around quickly for you, just to get an idea of what we're working with. A three and a half metres here, we've got the 20 horsepower on the back there. And there's a lot to take into consideration for a trip like today. And although it may not look like much, I've got just about everything I need. Things like VHF radio, making sure it's fully charged. You know, put it on charge night before, even if it says it's got full battery. Come up to the bow here. We've got a cool box. Hopefully fill that with some fish. Two cans of fuel. We've got 12 litres in that one, which I know will get me there and back, with about two litres to spare. But a five litre tank as reserve. Got a dry bag there with all our safety kit. Fish finder, plenty of rods to cover just about every situation, and I'm really excited. We've got some lovely conditions today, a little bit of chop, but uh, nothing to worry about. I had planned to head straight out this morning, but I've seen loads of bird activity right in close to the shore here. Always have a rod, rod rigged up, ready to go. Just uh, sort out this bit of tangle. So, yeah, bird activity is a good sign there's some fish nearby especially birds hitting the water like they are in front of me here i've just got myself a, a fish uh crazy eel type thing i forgot the name of it i'm just going to launch that out and let it sink a bit yeah really good sign when you see birds like this big patch of cormorants there and gulls hitting the water really good sign that there's some fish about oh there we go first fish slammed that fish paddle tail there just working it quite close to the surface i could see small fry jumping out much smaller than the size of lure mine but just a great indication that this bass there pushing them up and we know this is a bass <laughs> it's not a mackerel it feels like a half decent fish to get the day started absolute giveaway when there's birds feeding on the surface like this especially this time of year you just know that there's going to be fish chasing you know i don't know what those small fish are it could be white bait we've got a lovely bass to the boat already a bit of glare there if you don't mind let's get this fish to the boat not a bad size to get things started. Lovely stuff. But yeah, that's what we like to see. That's a lovely bass. Get a quick measure. Just about. Let's turn it the right way to start. With. Forty-eight centimeters on the nose. Well, that didn't take us long at all. Second cast. On a hard plastic and we're into a fish feels like a good one i can see it right up on the surface there you're probably having to contend with a bit of glare but fantastic fishing to start the day i can't believe it really didn't have to go far at all the plan was to go 13 miles out but we're not even a mile out and we're into good fish A lovely bass <laughs> bit of energy on that one you'll see what i switched over to here a uh ima or ima never know the right pronunciation for it Gla um hound glide this one's a feisty schoolie Let's see if i can pop those hooks out for him And there, oh, that one's in a bit of a tough part. We may need to, no, nope, we're all good. Pop that one out there. Yeah, there you are, the IMA Hound Glide in a nice natural silver and black pattern. Lovely fish. 
switched over to that because as anyone that's used fish lures will know they don't last too long so I want to preserve them for when I need them as right now this will do the business just fine I may even switch to a pachinko and have a bit of fun on the surface I just I've seen the odd fish rise and a few bursts but there we are usually I expect to see a bit more up on the surface than what I have today <laughs> oh, what a uh, what a day this has turned out to be already. And these aren't monsters, but you know they're great fun. I'm sure there's a bigger fish in amongst them. They're just everywhere. Hey, look at that! Like a launce or garfish. Ah, that bird just picked out something. There's a hell of a lot of bait around today. Lovely. We've hooked into quite a nice fish here on the uh, Pachinko, just on the edge of the rocks again. And this could be that 50 centimetre that I said I wanted earlier. It's quite a heavy fish, even though it stayed quite high. Hey, there we go, there we go, there we go. Wow. Let it, just let it go when it wants to do that. Don't try and fight it, because it will just pull the hook out. You've got to have that drag set right so we can go on runs like that. I knew, even though, because I know it's a bigger fish, I can feel it's heavier. It just hadn't gone on the runs that I was expecting it to earlier. So I knew it would have a bit of energy when it came into the boat here. It's a lovely looking fish there. Probably going to try and go on another run. I'm just going to let it tire itself out a bit. So when I get it in close to the boat, it's not going crazy. And I can just slip it in the net. I can get my bloody net, that is. Have the net on the tube there ready. Just keeping applied pressure on it, getting it closer to the boat. This is a nice fish, you know. I don't want to, I don't want to lose it by being making silly mistakes, as it all too easily can be. All right, let's see if we can just ease her in. Just a light bit of pressure. She's up on the surface now, so she hasn't got that much energy left. Slipper in the net. Ah, come on! Got the bloody hook. Right, there we go. Fish in the net. Lift her up straight on the cool box, reduce the risk of spines and hooks in the uh, in the tubes. Right, let's have a look at her. Fantastic fish, really, really nice to see this size fish coming today. Straight away, you know, we've not we've not had to go far at all to get one of these. Great fun, and on the uh, on the surface lure. So you know, like I was saying earlier, sometimes just gives you that edge over uh, over other lures of surface lure. It's strange. It doesn't look very natural, but uh, it just gets, you want, you want those, when there's loads of fish like there is today, you want them competing for a lure. As if it's just something that looks a bit crap, you know, they're not that interested in it, then they're just gonna, sort of, they might peck at it, or you might get the odd fish, but you want them competing. So the best fish goes for it. Right. She's calmed down quite a bit, but we'll stick our finger just. We don't want to go inside those gills there, but just on the top there. So you're resting on the plate and in the corner of the mouth, you know, in the jaw there. Let's slip our net down and get a measurement. So that is, yeah, it's over 50 because uh, it's a 50 centimeter cool box. The, uh, you know, the measurements here. So you can just see there 50. So that's about 52. Really nice bar of silver there. Really nice bar. You know, catch one of them in a session and you've had a good session, really. Prime condition, absolutely stunning fish, aren't they? Really, really happy to get catch this. That's my 50 ticked off for today. We'll get a quick picture and then send her on our way. Well, here we are, eight miles out and uh, not a lot around us <laughs> to see. The land's just about, um, just about visible from here. <laughs> It's a strange feeling being this far out on a small boat, I can tell you. And I can see the Eddystone Lighthouse way over in the distance there. It's only about three, four miles. But I'm just stopping off at this bit of reef here. See if I can try for some pollock. 
cod or anything really that will hang around on deep parts of the reef. We're in 45 meters of water at the moment, so quite deep, about eight and a half miles out from our launch point and it's going to start shelving up pretty quickly so I'm going to be working my, uh, my favourite sort of combination here we've got the H2O Nebula um, soft plastic so the vertical um, rating on this is 160 grams um, paired with a pen slammer 4,500 I'm going to be working this fish black minnow in a nice fluor orange colour um, with a 60 gram head so that should be about enough to get me down to the sort of 20 to 30 meter range where I'm going to be fishing. Really exciting stuff. Don't know what we're going to catch here, but uh, yeah, I've gone for that orange colour because it tends to tends to um, be a favourite for the, for the pod, uh, pod, cod and pollock. There's a new name for them. Um, out here in deeper water. So yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. But uh, yeah, it was quite an enjoyable steam out. A little bit, a little bit of swell. Um, but it's it's calmed down and the wind's dropping, so I'm uh, yeah quite comfortable. Really excited to see what the fishing holds. My approach to fishing a big bit of reef like this is to, uh, is to use a combination of two things to help find my sort of drift setup. So I've got my Navionics app on my phone, and I'm looking at the structure and looking where what structure I want to fish over, target what species, and then looking at the wind and the tide. So the wind is pushing me from east to west along the tide. And then I'm going to use my Garmin fish finder here to look for structure. And what I mean by that is I'm looking for when, when it starts to sort of, you know, when it starts to shelve up a bit or drop off and then put the lure in that position. Sometimes you can often see the, uh, the lure on the sounder if you've got a good one. And then I'm going to work that lure over that structure sort of a few meters above. I'm going to drop it down and then a few winds up, a few winds up, just wait for the hits. If you don't get any, drop back down and I just want to sweep along that bit of reef nicely looking for any shoals of fish along the way and just working that lure right around the structure it might take a few attempts to get the right drift you won't always get it first time especially if you've got uh, you know varying conditions if you've got wind changing direction or you know a change in tide but it is essential to uh, to set up a nice yeah a nice long drift you don't want to just be putting yourself right in the middle of the reef um, because before you know it, you'll be off it. You want to get yourself ahead of it a bit, get that lure down, and then when it starts, to, you know, when you start to come across a bit of structure, you're fishing over it. It takes a bit of practice, and uh, yeah, I don't always get it right. But like I say, having uh, having Navionics to find the reef and sort of get an idea of of how it's laid out, and then a a, um, a fish finder to see exactly what you're fishing over really does really does um, you know, give, you a, give you a good chance of getting, getting in the right position. I'm in 40 metres now, just trying to feel for the bottom. And I, uh, I know it's not too too rough down there at the moment, so I'm not too worried about my lure getting close. Just trying to find the bottom, looking for that slack line. There we are, help it touch them. And then just a few winds up, and I'm just sort of bouncing it along. And then as soon as I see it start to shelve up, I'm going to start a slow retrieve because I know it. I know it shelves up quite quickly here. You don't want to be too close to the bottom when it starts shelving up, otherwise you will just get pulled into a snag. Got to find where the fish are sitting on a reef because they'll usually be concentrated on one point. Sometimes you'll find them all over, but I usually find, especially with pollock, that they'll be over one particular point. Either just as it starts to rise up, just as it starts to drop or right in the middle. Um, so yeah, it'll usually be concentrated on one point. Yeah, that didn't take long at all. Literally, as, <laughs> almost as soon as I shut that camera off, I got a nice take. Quite a heavy fish, this. Just at the start of the reef. I'm not doing much at the moment. It could be a wrasse. Take our time with it. it. Did feel really heavy at the start. Although it's just not doing a lot now. It might suddenly take off. And that drag adjusted. It could be a massive wrasse. What have we got? Whoa. Nope, it's a pollock. Not a bad one either. Let's see if we can swing it in. There we go. 
Okay. Well, it didn't go very well that pollock, but good fish nonetheless. Let's see if we can just stick our fingers in the gill plates. The problem with pollock and their gill plates is they're a little bit more coarse than those of the bass, so they will tear your fingers up quite quickly. Not a huge fish, but a nice one to get started with and one that we can improve on, I'm sure. Just at the start of the reef there, but we're dropping back down, get a bigger one. Well, we've hooked into a fish which is certainly better than the last one. Quite deep, in 40 metres of water, just in between two pinnacles. And, uh, well, I expect it's a pollock, but it's slightly better than that first one we had. I'm just taking my time with it, I'm not reeling up too fast. As I said, we're in, we're in 40 metres of water. I can see the fish coming up on the sonar. And I'm just taking my time so that I don't burst the fish's swim bladder. If you reel it up really quickly, 40 metres, a pollock will just die. Um, yeah, you just, they just don't handle the, uh, the change in depth, the sudden change in depth very well. If you just take your time with it a bit and let it accumulate, get a little bit more <laughs> fun out of it, then uh, it's got a better chance of going back. As I'm unlikely to keep too many pollock today. If, it, if there's one that doesn't go back, then I'll keep it. But uh, yeah, I'd like to see them go back really. And it's a shame, real shame when you catch a fish and you just see it floating on the surface because, uh, because it hasn't survived the depth change. We've got a lovely fish here. Swing her in. Yeah, that's a fantastic pollock. That's what we come out here for, guys. Right, let's get her up for you. Yeah, that's why we come eight miles out. For fish like that. Absolutely great fun. Um, re yeah, really, really good fun on the sip. Took that nice, nice in the jaw there. You know that that would make a lovely meal. That would the fish of that size, but he's coming back. Hopefully, he looks he looks pretty healthy. He doesn't look like he's had too much trauma. Sometimes you see their uh, swim bladder poking out the mouth there. We'll see. Get my hand out of his gill rake. Yep, yeah, straight back. One of the things that really attracts people to fishing the Edison Lighthouse Nighthouse here is the uh, sheer variety of species that holds. Um, you can have fantastic bass fishing as well as offerings of cod and pollock, bream, all sorts get caught out here. Um, I'm just going to start off today I think with a bit of drifting with the lures, uh, bouncing a black minnow along the deeper parts of the reef, just seeing what's about there. There's a huge tidal flow out here and um, it's just a little bit too fast for me to be live bait bass. Now, I think I've probably said in my videos before that there's no such thing as too much current for bass. But uh, when it's really ripping like it is today, it just makes it quite difficult to manage on a small boat like this. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna wait for that tide to ease off ever so slightly. And, uh, and then I'll try and get some live bait and um, sort of focus my attentions on the bass. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bounce some black minnows around to start off with and see what there is. Well, first take at the Eddy Stone and it was an absolute screamer. I've just come over a shallow bit of reef and hit into a really good fish here. I'm praying I can land this because it feels like a really, really good fish. Wow. Oh, a tremendous run there. I'm not really sure what it is. It could be a big pollock, but it followed it all the way up from about 30 metres. To, must have been about 10 metres below the boat. Nice bass. Let's get that back ready. Oh, that's a great fish. <laughs> That's why we come out here. I was just thinking, oh, it's been a bit slow so far, but this is a lovely fish. If I can get it to the boat, I'll be very happy. Fantastic bass to start the uh, Eddie Stone day off. I've just got to be very careful with it. It's still got quite a bit of energy. Like I said, it took it right by the boat. Fantastic bass. <laughs> what a fish. Right, let me sort myself out. God, that's a whopper. I'll tell you what, this is one for the, uh, oh, one for 
the camera. Here we go. Right. Let's have a look at her. Oh, her neck. <laughs> what a fish. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely bass. And that just slammed that black minnow, number six in khaki. Cracking fish though. Cracking fish. Really, really good way to start the day. <sighs> Almost had me. It just went on a tremendous run. Unfortunately, I didn't have the camera recording because <laughs> it just took off. But look at that. Lovely bass. Right, let's get a measure on her. I expect it will be high 60s. Oh. <laughs> Tell you what, when you get a fish like that, you just... The adrenaline starts pumping. Well, for me it does anyway. And uh, your legs go all shaky and... <laughs> That's why you come out. Come out, you guys, for fish like that. Right. Set my... Uh, set my tape measure out here on the deck. Uh, get... Like, like I said, I'm expecting it to be high 60s. Could be. I don't think it's quite 70. Right, let's get a measure on her. So, tail down there. So that is, by my tape measure, 63. So not a bad guess. 63 centimetres. On black minnow here. Hang on, I'll try and pop it out. And that's what she took. A black minnow number six in khaki with the, uh, I can't remember what weight that is. It might be 90 grams that head. Be a little bit less i'm not entirely sure that's um great lure for working in the sort of 30 meter range especially when you've got a bit of tidal run like we have today <sighs> oh i love i love it guys i love it so yeah great way to start the day off out here so we've had a 50 and now we've got ourselves a 60. not much more to say really <laughs> apart from let's get a bigger one <laughs> Maybe a 70. That's all, that's, what's our, that's our next goal, a 70. If I get a 70 today, I'll be great. Oh my God, just look at this. There are fish everywhere. Wow. Right, let's stop messing around and get a lure in amongst this. It's not gonna take me long. I'm a hound glide, whip it out. Watch this, ready? Hit straight away, there we are, fish. <laughs> Told you it wouldn't take long. Oh, what a day, there's fish everywhere. <laughs> Bass as well. They're just mullering stuff on the surface here. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, some big ones amongst them, guys. Some big ones. Oh! <laughs> They're everywhere. I'll tell you what, everyone's trying to muscle in on the action here. Just hundreds of them. They're good sized fish as well. Really special, really special this. I'm in heaven. I don't know. Maybe I'm dead. Maybe I'm in heaven. <laughs> There's fish everywhere. Absolutely. Can you hear it? Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Absolutely insane. Look at that man. Look at the size of this bass. Hang on. Oh my god. It's a huge fish. This is insane. Hang on. Let me just show you the average size of these fish that are just going absolutely ballistic out here. Just want to be careful that I don't. That's like a 55 centimetre fish right there. And they're everywhere. Just absolutely hammering some bait fish. And this I'm a hound glide is a. Uh, yeah, they like that. 
but it's really good, really good uh, imitation of small bait fish. Oh gosh, adrenaline's going guys. Adrenaline is on. Right, this ain't going to take long. Watch this. This is insane. It's not even fishing at this point, is it? It's just putting hook in the water and waiting for a fish to smash it. There's so many, watch this. Watch this, ready? It's not going to take long. Oh my god, they're everywhere. There you are, fish. <laughs> what? That's huge! <laughs> that is huge! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's huge! That is a huge bass! What? What on earth? Oh. No, 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 no. Ah, he's off. He's off. That was huge. That was huge. Damn it, I can't believe I lost that. Oh, I hope there was some more. You bent the hook. Oh, this is getting silly. Right, I've just got to compose myself. I've got to compose myself here because start making silly mistakes like that. Ridiculous. Oh, it's a massive glass and I can't believe I just lost it. Oh god, hopefully we can make up for it. Come on fishing guys. I've got some bent hooks. Show me what you got. Adrenaline levels are high right now. Here we go, right. Birds are flying to my line. Flying to that was a massive bass. Oh, yes. <laughs> What's it doing? Back in there. Coming towards me? That was a huge bass that I lost just then. I can't believe it. Could have been a double. But look at this one. This is crazy. Be careful I don't snap my rod. Just trying to bully these fish in and get in some of the bigger ones. I mean this is a massive bass. Look at that guys. Tell you what, if I was a commercial angler today, I'd be making a lot of money. But I'm not. It's really going back. Come on, right, excuse me, pliers. Excuse. Excuse me a second. Let's pop these hooks out of this fish. Yes. Bang. Fantastic. And that's small compared to that one I just lost it and I can't believe I lost it. God, what an idiot. I'm telling you, that fish I lost was that 70 centimetre fish I was going to Everything's calmed down a bit now, but that was looking mental. I've never had anything like that. There were some seriously big bass there. You don't usually get that in a shoal like that. Big bass on a feeding frenzy and just one big shoal. I lost a really, really good fish at the side of the boat. And... Wow. I'm glad I caught that on camera. I wish you'd seen that fish there. It's like a feeling. Of, of uh, horror with yourself, really. You might have lost it. Oh well. There might be some more. 
This is why you come out, make the effort, you know, get yourself prepared, make sure your boat's safe, you've got the right gear. And even on little boats like this, you can come and have some fantastic days fishing. We've still got a bit of time to go. <sighs> wow. I can't believe I was calling a 50 centimetre bass small then. But um, if you'd seen the size of that one, I'd lost. I've gone to head cam to try and show you the madness that's in Roblin here. If you look at that sounder, that's all fish. You see how there's a gap in there? That's the bottom down there. And in between, it's just thick with fish. I think it's mackerel. I've had a few I'm just casting the uh, fish crazy paddle tail. And uh, yeah, there is just fish everywhere at the moment. Pretty sure it's bass chasing mackerel and they're fairly big mackerel as well which would explain the size of the bass that we've been catching so far ideally right now i'd have a big mackerel live bait out but i just haven't got the rod set up yet for it so there we go there's a fish then this is fantastic fishing right here i wasn't expecting this today i was quite happy with that 60 centimeter i had earlier and this is just surpassing my expectations. I'm so absolutely heartbroken about losing that big one earlier. But I'll tell you what, this sport is making up for it. You just gotta let them go when they do that. Just gotta let them go. Try and stop it and it will pull the hook or snap the line. I feel like I'm spoiled guys because this is a good fish. You know what, I'm not even going to bother with it. I will bother with the net. Seeing that, that's a fantastic bass. Come on. Oh. Wow. Another good fish, guys. Lovely, lovely bass right there. Take a look at that. Beautiful. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? does not get any better than that but we'll try well I'm just taking a moment to reflect on the uh, the madness that I've <laughs> I've witnessed this afternoon um, yeah I've never seen anything like that before I've, I've seen bass feeding uh, in a frenzy like that before but not bass of that size um, that was really interesting because most of those fish were over um, you know, 45, 50 centimetres, they're all sort of, yeah, in the sort of mid-50s range. Um, and there were some really big fish in there as well. Um, the one I lost, I reckon, was probably a double. And I saw fish that size as well. So, really, really interesting. I think they were feeding on mackerel. Um, big mackerel as well, because I caught a few. Um, yeah, just, just incredible. And it really does make the journey out here worth it. Because I tell you what... 30 miles is a long old slog on a boat like this. Um, it's not so much of a slog because you're going at 15 knots if you can, or even 18 or 20, um, depending on the on the level of chop. But uh, it's a long way out, and if you don't catch anything, then you can be a little bit hard done by. But I haven't. I've had a fantastic uh, day's fishing, um, predominantly bass, with a few pollock earlier um, at the uh, the first reef that we stopped off at. But the bass fishing has just been amazing um, out here. Um, yeah, definitely my best session on them so far this year, um, which is saying something because I've had some great sessions this year. It's really, really flattened out now, um, exactly how it was forecast to. Um, the wind's dropped right off, it's practically been done at all, and it's, yeah, almost flatly smooth. So I've got a really nice ride back. Um, should mean I can do it in decent time. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, uh, coming out for a day like today um, is exhausting. You're constantly sort of you know bracing yourself, and, you know, sort of whizzing around <laughs> trying to chase those fish, and then actually catching those fish. It's hard. It's you know, it's, it takes it takes its toll. But what a day, man! What a day. Um, yeah, I'll always remember this one. That's for sure. And I'll always remember that bloody fish that I lost uh yeah don't be in a rush <laughs> like i was i was in a rush because there were so many fish around 
Um, I was just in a rush to get that one in the net and yeah, didn't, didn't let the fish tire itself out uh, and it had the energy and just used, it, used its weight to bend the hook and uh, that's it, it was gone. So yeah, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> uh, gonna head back in now and uh, yeah, chill out. So here's something that might interest uh, interest my viewers. I'm going to start doing some giveaways on the videos. Um, start giving back some of the ad revenue that I'm making now um, in the form of buying some lures and sending them on to you guys. So it's going to be quite easy to enter these giveaways. Um, I'm going to do one for my YouTube and one for my Instagram. So make sure you're following my Instagram, Open on the Water. And uh, yep, I'll give you more details on how to win the Instagram one there. And then for the YouTube one, all we're going to do is basically, these are the fish crazy paddle tails. I've gone and bought these from the local tackle shop. Um, so that's a that's a two times cut combo with the uh, 20 gram heads. One of my favourite lures. This has been one of my best this year. Um, it's caught me more fish than any other lure I own. Um, and yeah, I really, really like these lures. So I want to pass pass a pack on to one of my, uh, one of my watchers. Um, and to enter, all you've got to do is put a comment on this video um, stating how you'd work this lure and what you'd be targeting. So I think uh, there's always a lot of talk about lures, but people don't really seem to mention much about how to work the lures. So I want to put an emphasis on that. Um, if you've watched my videos, and I, I always ramble on about how I work these lures. So yeah, just comment how you'd work it, and then I'll pick pick the best one, and uh, I will send them to you free of charge. Um, and yeah, my way of giving back. Uh, to say thank you to all my supporters and I'll try and do them try and do them on most videos if I can um, if, I, if I get that ad revenue and uh, yeah I will announce the winner in the next video so good luck to all that enter make sure you are subscribed you've liked this video and then leave your comment and you have a chance of winning a nice pack of lures well here we are back at the slipway in Lou really really peaceful here a little bit different to what it was like about four hours ago when there was bass surfacing everywhere in the sort of five to eight pound range smashing mackerel mackerel smashing white bait birds diving everywhere that was that was mayhem of the uh, of the best type it was amazing um yeah what a fantastic day um it has been really really special um you know we've we've covered <laughs> a fair bit of distance today on this on this little sib um, but god it's been fun um, and yeah it just goes to show that even a small boat like this um, you know with the right right preparation and um, you know a little bit of um, madness 
um, yeah, you can you can go and do some really really great things with them. Um, you can have great fishing and just some really epic adventures. I'm sure there'll be a lot more on the horizon um, in this thing. So make sure that you're subscribed, and then you'll know when I'm out and about. And uh, yeah, really appreciate all the support on the videos. Um, channel's growing nicely now. Um, I, yeah, I'm always, always, um, you know, always, always glad and happy to speak to you guys and share my experience out on the water. Because today was a special one. <laughs> I'm glad I got it on video because I don't think I don't think people would believe me if I didn't. I don't know what they wouldn't believe. The fact that I was out 13 miles on an inflatable boat, or the fact that there was five pound bass everywhere. <laughs> great fun um, yeah it won't be long I promise till I see you on the next one